Thank you, Madam President, for allowing me to speak in such a historic debate. Tonight, I have the privilege of opening the case for the opposition, and it falls upon me to introduce the speakers of the proposition. You have just heard from Jenny Heath, a second year at reading PPE at Oriole College. A PPE is growing at Oriole? I think we know how that one's gonna go. <laughs> Next, you will hear from Leo Buckley, a third year at reading history and politics at Trinity College. It is ironic that he is on pr the proposition tonight, as his, as his attempts to intervene in Russia's invasion of Ukraine is well known. <laughs> you will then hear from Aryan Dalwani, another second year reading PP at Oreo College. As someone whose entire homeland was created by foreign intervention, I was surprised to hear that the Gibraltarian is, spe is speaking in proposition tonight. Finally, to close the debate, for the proposition is Alex McGovern, a third year reading history at New College. It's a shame that he's speaking in favor of the motion tonight, as I hear that a bit of milk-based growth intervention goes a long way. <laughs> Madam Speaker, these are your guests and they are most welcome. Madam President, we live in perilous times. Last year, with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we were once again reminded that peace and stability are not something that we should take for granted. Of course, the people of the United Kingdom were not involved in the direct conflict, but the effects of war were felt far and wide. Double-digit inflation and the ensuing cost of living crisis still haunts us to this day. Madam President, today we're debating the merits of U.S. interventionalism. Now, as the Honorable Lady, the Chair of the Consultative Committee, has just explained to you, I am not a historian. I simply do not have the expertise to outline the last 250 years of American history and add up the relative pros and cons of every foreign intervention conducted on behalf of the United States. What I aim to do with tonight's speech, however, is to imagine a world with you where America instead of supporting its allies and fighting for its interests abroad, pursues a policy of isolationism and what some may call America first. And I want you to ask yourself, is this a future that we want? 51.05 US billion US dollars. According to the State Department, that is how much the US government has spent in economic and military assistance in the last fiscal year alone. It is easy when thinking about foreign interventionalism to think about Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan. And it is certainly true that America has played an outsized role in the Middle East in the last 20 years. However, Madam President, I would urge you to think of millions of people that benefit every single day from the humanitarian and economic aid rendered by our extraordinary foreign service. This means helping the children of Ethiopia survive until their second birthday. This means partnering with women-led cooperatives and driving food resilience in Morocco. No, thank you. This also means administering vaccines and education programs that have helped to save 17 million lives from HIV AIDS and enable 2.4 million babies to be born HIV free. Madam President, to shy away from foreign interventionalism would mean a future where the United States abandons these programs and leaves the most vulnerable of the world without aid or assistance. Is that what we want? Board of information? No, thank you. 17, 75 billion US dollars. According to the White House, that is how much the United States has spent on humanitarian, financial, and military support for Ukraine since the beginning of the invasion. The extraordinary success of Ukraine in this war is no doubt largely due to the resilience of its incredible people who are fighting not only for their homeland, but for the freedoms they earn by blood. However, we can by no means discount the crucial role that the international military community, especially the United States, has played during the conflict. Time and time again, when everything seemed dark and all seemed lost, America stepped in and rendered a helping hand. We helped because we must. We helped because we believe in the everlasting values of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We helped because we know that friends rely on each other in the most difficult of times. Madam President, to shy away from foreign interventionism would mean a future where the United States turns its back on its allies and watch 
as the world falls to autocracy and subjugation. Is that what we want? Finally, I want to leave you tonight with a quote by, Frank, by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Speaking after the Second World War had ended, President Roosevelt, President Roosevelt says, unless the peace that follows recognizes that the whole world is one neighborhood and does justice to the whole human race, the germs of another world war will remain as a constant threat to mankind. Justice to the whole human race. Madam President, I am proud of US interventionism abroad because to me, interventionism means America will always fight for the interest of its allies, that we will always defend democracy, rule of law, and justice, and that we will always stand in the forefront of the struggle for a better tomorrow. That is what I want. Thank you.